Seven Days to Die modders have been working overtime through the beginning months of 2024. I like to keep my eye on new mods coming out, and this video is a showcase of six mods that have caught my attention between New Year's Day and the end of February 2024. As of recording this video, all featured mods are compatible with Alpha 21, and if any of these mods have caught your attention, I have left links to each of the mods in the video description. The first mod of 2024 that caught my eye was Bestiary. This mod adds a mysterious book to your inventory at the start of your playthrough. In the beginning, this book is mostly blank, with crude drawings of 36 zombies and animals you may come across in-game. The first time you take out a zombie or animal type listed in the pages of the book, you'll see a book icon appear on the screen that indicates a new entry has been added. Open the book from your hotbar, and you will notice the pages corresponding to the slain zombie have now been filled in. These completed pages will share information and traits for each of the zombie types, as well as some hypothetical lore for you to ponder as you carry on your adventure. As an example, the book entry for the Screamer zombie points out that the clothing for the Screamer appears to be that of an asylum patient, and that the creepy teeth-filled smile may be an evolution of the zombie condition. Are all the zombies evolving into more terrifying beings? I don't know, but it makes you think. Other than giving you something to read as you make your way through the game, the mod also raises the chances of dismemberment for each of the zombie types you add to the book. The idea is that studying each type of zombie will give you more information and ability to kill that zombie type. I can see this mod being most useful for new players that are learning the mechanics of the game and how to deal with the zombies of increasing difficulty as they complete quests and clear out different POIs. It also adds another aspect to the game that experienced players can appreciate, simply because it adds an interesting alternative to the gameplay without altering the vanilla experience. My only minor gripe with this mod is that the light reflecting off the pages can make viewing the illustrations a little more difficult. I often found myself having to angle the book a certain way to see the handwritten text clearly, but this is completely subjective. And to be fair to the mod, I'm an old man, and I find myself struggling to clearly see pages of a book in real life, so it's shockingly realistic at least. The second mod I've been really enjoying lately is Water Cooler. Water Cooler adds two custom Water Cooler models to the game that are perfect for survivors that like to decorate your in-game world to increase immersion. While these refreshing furniture variants look amazing, they also serve a practical application to the game. More on this a little later. To craft these Water Coolers in-game, you will first need to find a standard Water Cooler and harvest it. Once you have the Water Cooler in your inventory, five bottles of Grandpa's Moonshine, 10 jars of clean water and a zombie head, you can craft the water cooler from the player's crafting menu. The zombie heads can be obtained from harvesting zombie corpses. The catch is, these heads will not drop every time you harvest a corpse. The mod creators have said there is a 5% chance to collect a head from each zombie corpse. In my testing, I spawned 25 zombies together one head, which to me feels like a fair amount of grind. The female head will be required to craft Joe's Cocktail Cooler, and the male head is required to craft Rex Rum Cooler. The mod creators had initially planned to have water coolers for several zombie types. However, they had to scale back the idea after seeing how much work will be required to produce each of the variants. Not only do these water coolers look great, but as mentioned previously, they also serve a practical purpose. Once crafted and placed, these water coolers will act similar to the Dew Collector and produce beverages over a period of time. Drinking Rex Rum will hydrate a player by 10 points, increase stamina regen by 15%, and have a 25% chance of dysentery that will remove 15 health points. Rex Rum will also decrease your risk of getting an infection from zombies that will be multiplied the more jars you consume. You just need to be okay with randomly shitting yourself after knocking back a few of these tasty beverages. Joel's Cocktail will also hydrate you by 10 points, increase stamina regen by 15% and have a 25% chance of dysentery. Just like Rex Rum, Joe's Cocktail has the additional advantage of enhancing your sense of smell, I'm doing inverted commas here with my fingers, which will allow you to cook better meals that increases the amount of stamina gained from food consumption. Water Cooler is an example of a small mod that can add an interesting feature to the game without drastically affecting the vanilla gameplay. Plus, they just look <coughs> cool. Next up in the list is Brass Catcher. Brass Catcher allows you to attach a mod to your weapon that collects bullet casings from spent ammunition that can be used to craft more ammunition. To balance the mod, not all casings will be collected. Apparently our crafting skills need to be improved as only 50% of the casings will be caught by the Brass Catcher attachment. The Brass Catcher can be found in loot, purchased from the trader or crafted in the workbench once unlocked by reading the schematic. The Brass Catcher can be attached to any weapon that uses brass cased ammunition. To further balance this mod, the attachment will slow down your reload speed by 15%, so you may want to spend some skill points where necessary to counteract the reload debuff. Once the mod is attached to your firearm, the captured brass casings will be deposited into your inventory, ready to be crafted back into ammunition from your workbench. 
a simple realistic mod that will save you time crafting your precious ammunition. Continuing on with the realism theme, we have the longest mod name ever, which is Bang For Your Bucket, an alternative early game water system. For the sake of my sanity, I'm gonna to refer to this mod as the Bucket Mod. The Bucket Mod is a small mod with large outcomes. The mod effectively gives players an alternative to gathering clean water without relying on the expensive and slow dew collectors. In Alpha's past, empty jars could be gathered and filled with murky water to be boiled into clean water on a campfire. The Bucket Mod takes this idea further and allows you to boil entire buckets of water at a time. Simply take an empty bucket to any water source. Fill up the bucket by holding it in your hands and right clicking. Then take the full bucket of water to your campfire and craft the clean bucket of water from your recipes. Once completed, you can open the bucket package to receive your empty bucket back as well as three jars of clean water. The best part about this mod is that you can repeat this process as many times as you like. And the more buckets you acquire, the more buckets you can boil at once. Buckets can be found in loot as well as purchased from a trader. To balance this mod, water filters will be more difficult to find at the traders, as well as costing more dukes. The Water Purifier Helmet mod has remained unchanged, as they are fairly difficult to come across as it is. This mod allows survivors to manage their clean water supplies in a realistic way, without relying solely on the dew collector or finding murky water in loot. Since the release of Alpha 21, it has always annoyed me that the glass jar containing your clean water somehow dissolves into thin air after drinking its contents. And for that reason, I may just add this mod to my quality of life mods I use in every playthrough of Seven Days to Die. The fun pimps have received plenty of criticism over the 11 years it has taken them to get Seven Days to Die to the point it is now. Most of these criticisms are unfounded and voiced by people that have no idea how to make a functional game. That being said, I do agree with a few. With Alpha 22 just around the corner, how the heck in heck do we not have dedicated models for all food and drink items found in the base game? There is nothing more annoying than drinking a jar of honey only to watch my character place a dirty paper bag in his mouth instead of a jar of honey. This next mod helps fix that. Well, some of it. Vanilla Drink Models Alpha 21 simply adds a drink model for all standard beverages found in the game, including honey. The mod will add a dedicated model for honey, beer, yucca smoothies, coffee, Yucca Juice, Goldenrod Tea, and Red Tea. You may have noticed by now that I appreciate the subtle mods that increase immersion into the Seven Days to Die universe. Vanilla Drink Models definitely falls into this category. If the fun pimps ever watch this video, can we please have these simple features implemented into the vanilla game? Fingers crossed it will all be updated in Alpha 22. <laughs> Now, the final mod that will be featured in this video is the POI that has been visible throughout the entire video. Fluffy Panda Alpha 21 Petting Zoo is a point of interest mod that will keep you on your toes as you navigate this rundown menagerie of wild animals and the living dead. This is one petting zoo where you won't want to pet the inhabitants. There are a few surprises waiting for you as you fight your way around the POI, and I don't intend to spoil them for you in this video, so I'm purposefully being vague about its contents. I personally feel that discovering these unique additions to the game need to be experienced by yourself for the first time, and not by some dork on YouTube. If you have been paying attention throughout the video, you have no doubt seen enough to decide if you would like to explore this POI for yourself. I will say, however, there is plenty of loot located throughout the POI, as well as many dangers, so come prepared. My only mild complaint about the design of this POI is the slightly confusing route you're required to take through the petting zoo. There is lighting positioned around the POI to help guide you around the intended path. However, this lighting is difficult to see during the daytime. I think attacking this POI at night would improve the experience. So keep that in mind if you come across the petting zoo in game. As this mod is a POI mod, you do not install the files into the mod folder like the rest of the mods on this list. You'll need to copy the POI files into your data folder that is located within the main game game folder. If you need help with this process, I described the steps required in my previous mod video that I will link in the video description. I also have a dedicated video tutorial on how to install the other mods showcased in this video that I will link in the description if anyone needs help installing mods. That's it for this one, Survivor. Stay safe out there. Uh, damn zombies.